The four mass step is a little more complicated than the main mass step in that instead of sitting totally flat it has some curves to it. We've cut out a blank. Um, the piece is roughly 8 feet by 5 feet by 19 inches thick. Then we can lay the piece on it, line it up and we roughly draw the draw the piece out the French ruler makes sure that we have an even curve on both sides um, otherwise you're going to get some distortion and really you need to try and fight um, to make sure that the port and starboard side of it are exactly the same um, these lines are very important at this point in time because if you're going to go on a milling machine you're going to need some square lines to line the piece up and so more of these lines you can put this one being very uh, important and at a later point in time this one now we just take the piece go on the scroll saw and cut it out and then onto our vise and start to shape so I tend to, following the advice in the book, shape the bottom and get the bottom to fit first. And to do that, I actually take the angle off the model itself. Um, you can also, Greg suggests, you can make up a paper template and use a paper template to get the angles because the angles that are shown on the book are certainly going to be different, slightly different than the angles on the model itself. I like to work with soft woodness, so as I did in, with the main mass step, I made these mahogany blanks. This was the first one to try and get the angles correct. And then as it progressed, this was the second one that came almost perfect um, in relation to what I proposed to build with the hardwood blank. I have to say, most of the tools that I've used in the rough shipping of the hardwood, um, this file that I got when I was in New York, which is a rough, almost like a rust file, stainless steel file, absolutely invaluable. It really takes the hardwood down quickly. And these rusts that I thought I would have no use for, I've used this one in particular quite a bit. And then for the fine work, I go back to these diamond, small diamond, um, files and then finally to a regular um, file and of course I end up with sandpaper. Having cut it out I find that I'm constantly going back to the French ruler to try and make sure that the curves are symmetrical on both sides. Um, so I've redrawn this many times and then back onto the um, device and filing, going back and forth, taking little bites all the time, and then going back, fitting it to the model, seeing how it looks. Um, as it starts cleaning up, I'll use finer sandpaper, and the pen sander is useful for this, and then some very fine files. And then, of course, as soon as that's finished, um, I go on to the milling machine to do whatever I can, because this really is the way to get really clean, precise work. And then finally using all the rulers to get precise holes to drill in exactly the correct spot. So here we have the finished piece. Um, it's taken most of a day. And uh, uh, two softwood blanks. And I think we have it down pretty good. Um, lots of sanding, lots of filing. Um, certainly the milling machine helped make it an easy job and kept the accuracy uh, fairly good. And the final check. And the most important part to line up is I put the marks on top and the mast must line up. And she's lining up pretty good right on the center. 
So once we get the final fit, we drill the holes, these are the location holes, and then just apply the glue. Took a little while, but um, we've got it in place. Once the piece is stuck, we'll go to the holes and drill the balance of the holes to keep it in place. All that's left now is to sand and clean up. And again, the pen sander um, comes to the rescue as per normal. And then we will put on some wipe on poly, which we put on with a brush. And then once we've got it everywhere, it's simply easier to put on with a brush. You simply wipe off with a clear piece of cotton rag. And she's done. We'll probably add two or three more coats, but that's really the end of it.